Hello friends, my name is Ramasu. Today we shall discuss about a topic that what is client server architecture. Friend, today's topic is very interesting, especially if you have interest in technology or you want to learn about it. So let's start. First of all, I would request to please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell option as well so that many videos can reach to you. Friend, client server architecture is a computing model in which multiple components work in a strictly defined roles to communicate the server host deliver and manages most of the resources and services to be consumed by the client this type of shared resources architecture has one or more client computers connected to a central server over a network or internet connection client server architecture is also known as networking computing model or client server network because all the requests and services are delivered over a network. It's considered a form of distributed computing systems because the components are doing their work independently of one another. In a client server architecture, the server acts as the producer and the client acts as the consumer. The server houses and provides high-end computing intensive services to the client on demand these services can include application access, storage, file sharing, printer access, and direct access to the server's raw computing power. Client server architecture works when the client computer sends a resource or process request to the server over the network connection, which is then processed and delivered to the client. A server computer can manage several clients simultaneously whereas one client can be connected to several servers at a time, each providing a different set of service, uh, services. The client-server model, as it evolved, served pretty well for what some refer to as Web 2.0, where the Internet slowly because become a functional virtual space for users. It provided an established and predictable model for how user sessions would go and how providers delivered resources based on request for data packets and other resources. Now the example of client server communication. Here for example, client server communication uh, in an average use of a browser to access to a server side website. The user or client enters the URL the DNS server looks up the web server's IP address and gives it to the browser. The browser generates an HTTP or HTTPS request and the server as the producer sends the files the client as the consumer, receives them and then typically sends follow-up request. Although this model technically works for any number of similar processes, it does have some drawbacks. Over time, an alternative called peer-to-peer -peer or P2P modeling has merged, which many uh, feel is in some ways superior to traditional client-server models, especially in terms of handling uh, specific challenges where communications are more evolved. Issues with client server models. One of the biggest issues with a traditional client server setup is the nature of unpredictable workloads. In defining client server systems as systems that scale vertically and use central data stores, some analysts believe that peer to peer is more agile and versatile for making sure that unpredictable workloads are managed well. Experts talk about things like redundancy and availability zones and failover as a means to keep online business system running smoothly, despite changes in demand or other problems. For example, another major issue in the utility of a distributed denial of services attack in this type of attack out of control client activity swamps a server those who are looking at the internet of a couple of decades ago point out that it was fairly easy to 
swamp a site with a uh, with a attack because the average client server models was not set up for thresholds above a certain amount of traffic peer to peer systems can solve many of those problems and secure systems against attacks and similar cyber attacks peer to peer is also helpful in handling some kinds of other disruptions based on a single point of failure with the emergence of decentralized and distributed systems for example a blockchain immutable ledger technologies peer to peer systems are becoming more popular and are starting to replace client server architecture now the application problems the client server architecture is most useful for applications that require a separation uh, of, of concerns between the client and the server it is meant for system with uh, high interoperability the client server architecture style helps applications improve performance scalability in system that need separation of functionality the client server architecture design is meta applicable most applicable request validation and input could be handled from the client side while the load balancer routes the request to the server for adequate processing the server will uh, for processing the client's request and returning the result via the right protocol these layers complete task independently and they are useful for abstracting functionality for example the client does not need to know how the server handles user architect uh, authentication or request validation as well then uh, the next point that with the separation of functionality comes the ability of each layer to function more efficiently at at large scale modern techniques have been developed within the client server architecture to solve scalability challenges like load balancing uh, sharing and participating uh, partitioning these techniques provide performance improvements for multiple requests on the server side of the architecture and will be useful for software programs that deal with multiple requests as a user the categories of client server computation for one tier architecture consist of simple program running on a single computer without requiring access to the network user request don't manage any network protocols therefore the code is simple and the network is relieved of the extra traffic two tier architecture consists of the client the server and the protocol that links the two tiers the graphical user interface code resides on the client host and the domain logic reside on the server host the three tier architecture consists of a presentation tier which is the user interface layer the application tier which is the service layer and that performs detailed processing and the data tier which consists of a database server that stores information the end tier architecture divide uh, an application into logical layers which separate responsibilities and manage dependencies and physical terms which run on separate machines improve scalability and add latency from the additional network communication end tier architecture can be closed layer in which a layer can only communicate with the next layer down or open layer in which a layer can communicate with any layer below it so friend uh, thank you thanks a lot for watching the video i hope uh, you like this video if you like it please share it with the friends and colleagues and thanks a lot for watching the video thank you friends